all exercises and then you will tell me how we can learn from our mistakes so the intention behind this session is to uh, make you aware and also make myself aware of the general mistakes that we often do and let us try to minimize them or at least become attentive to their presence so i strongly believe that such kind of discussion will really help you moving forward after that i would like to meet two groups the vr group and the smart helmet group and i want to have some serious discussions with both the members of the group so i think we are clear on the agenda of the lecture yes ma'am okay right so can you see my screen yes ma'am all right so feel free to ask any questions okay don't hesitate so this is our officially last lecture on entrepreneurship and i have checked all your assessments and given you feedback i hope the feedback was useful but still i would like to point out some very important points and uh, that you must try not to repeat in the future okay so let us take this uh, essay submission so this is a essay submission so a student has written this and i also want to point out that i have used examples thoroughly from the submissions that i have got so i will be using them uh, they are not an indication of uh, anything good or bad on the people who have contributed i'm just using them as references to make a point so please do not try to take it personally it is no names are mentioned but still just uh, let us try to learn something from these examples so that is i want to say okay so going forward if you read this submission so it was about negotiation in real world so if you come across something like this uh, what is your first impression what is it you look at it or see when you look at something like this so these are two paragraphs from the submission yes yeah. ma'am presentation like what uh, ma'am each line uh, means at new line and it's not seems to be like some para mm -hmm. every line seems to be a different para okay right and not properly aligned okay scattered and a lot of grammatical mistakes a lot of grammatical mistakes are there so if you would were a teacher and uh, you would have come across such kind of submission what would be your first reaction or even if you were reviewing someone else's work and your friend handed over this work to you what would you tell him or her mam definitely first to correct this spellings uh, and the means we get the proper meaning from every sentence it shouldn't be like uh, there are many sentences that don't give a clear picture or not give a scattered picture right so as you have already pointed out most of the things that can be improved uh, maybe maybe the person did not have access to microsoft word and uh, somehow they tried to do something but ultimately it was of 10 marks and sending such kind of submissions you know these errors can be minimized you should not be losing your marks just like that for things you can work on so try not to repeat this mistake now let us look at this essay so this is the complete essay it has four paragraphs is it is neatly organized it has some mistakes however there is a flow in the story and it is extremely easy to understand this kind of submission and feel that the author has written something substantial so i am not saying a perfect essay or perfect writing does not have error i'm just saying it has a structure it is coherent and things make sense when you read that so just contrast this one with this one and you will understand that there are certain things that you can take care of and uh, silly mistakes that you can take care of so that 
you don't end up losing marks unnecessarily so some of the major issues in academic essay writing and normally in our schools and universities academic writing is not taught prominently but it is a very important um, because you will be working on your projects reports thesis and even in future you will be supposed to write documentations for some new softwares or some prototype that you are creating and the language used in such kind of documents is very different from journalistic writing or newspaper article writing that is why it is extremely important to understand what is academic writing in fact you are uh, have summer vacations when are your summer vacations starting and it is going on right? going on yes so till when uh, sorry you asked for summer vacation na the like, same break is same break same break same break uh, the same break is going on till 15th august the day 15th august mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So you have good amount of time to open certain things, and by the end of this lecture, okay. I will share some material that you can use. <clears throat> so okay. So the major issue in academic essay writing is that the student has not understood the question in the essay. So instead of assuming what the question means, whenever you have even a iota of doubt about what the essay is asking, you must approach your instructor. to obtain more clarity on what is expected and understand the question properly so that you do not lose out marks because you did not understand the question properly so your writing is fine but you have written on a topic which is completely off what was expected and this has happened in your class also i came across a very excellent good essay but i was very sad to give it very less marks because even though stand alone it was an excellent piece of writing however it had deviated starkly from the expected answer for the question and by expected i don't mean a template based answer but what the question was saying yes midun you want to say something so i'll continue the sec the second issue is there is insufficient background knowledge on the topic so most of the times uh, your instructors is depending on the year of graduation you are in the difficulty level of essays will change it differs for first year second year third year so uh, if you have insufficient background knowledge on the topic then it is advised that you read and gather knowledge before you sit to write because this is not a novel you are writing this is not a story you are writing it is something you are writing when you are reflecting on something so that means you need to read about it especially if it's not related to certain experience of yours but reading is not enough gathering knowledge is not enough unless and until you reflect on what you have read so what do you mean by reflecting on reading what is it according to you what does it mean when i say you need to reflect on what you are reading what does it mean what does reflecting on what you have read means uh mam is it like uh, what i want to convey i must write these sentences according to that or uh, my writing should be like what mm -hmm. i want to carry to other person so that is a way of writing that is a way you are articulating your thoughts reflecting means you really discuss what you are reading with yourself how far it is true is the author absolutely correct in stating something or is author not considering some aspects and has made a general idea which may not hold true everywhere again think about critical analysis critical reflection so for example when you post something on facebook a post and there are so many comments that come up in which people are talking about all the different ways in which it can be considered some are opposing the opinion some are approving of the opinion some are supporting it so basically they are all reflecting on what has been posted okay so similarly when you read something 
try to reflect on it, be it a research paper or a report or any article on innovation, business, entrepreneurship, even software engineer failures. So that is what reflection means. Is it clear now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Because uh, your instructor will not give you marks for uh, taking information from one bucket and putting information on other bucket, which is your assignment. That is not the point of assignments. The point of assignments is that you, that we can see, and you can also see how to think, how to think about what you are thinking. So it's basically about metacognition, thinking about your own thinking. So it is never about uh, showing your knowledge entirely. It is about knowledge balanced with how you are reflecting on the piece of knowledge that you have. So that is extremely important. So next time when you read any piece of news or anything, sit with yourself after reading it and ponder over it. Think over what you have just read. The other issue that students normally face is trouble in organization of thoughts. So what I found a quite a useful technique uh, when we have so many thoughts going on inside our mind and we don't know what to write and how to organize our essay. One thing I really found useful and I always suggest to students, even my friends, is creating of a mind map. So let us see what a mind map is. So suppose I give you an assignment in which uh, you are supposed to write what an essay on what I should study. So if you look at this, so this is a mind map. So this is a central idea. Can you see my cursor? Yes, yes. ma'am. So this is the central idea, what I should study. Then the first level distinction is favorite subjects, good subjects for jobs and least favorite subjects. So at the first level, the student has made three categories. So basically three upper level categories, favorite subjects, good subjects for jobs and least favorite. And then he or she has branched it out. So in favorite subjects, he has art, history, English, in good subjects for jobs, this person has selected journalism, business, or least favorite subjects, this person doesn't like science. Okay. And then again, this person is branching out that what in art can be explored. So photography, painting, sculpture, favorite subjects, history. So he or she can become a teacher and all these things. So basically what this person is doing is uh, giving shape and structure to the mess or to the unorganized thoughts that are going inside the person's mind. So the good thing about this is this leads to an organization. So you sit with pen and paper and an A4 size sheet and you draw all this. So now your thoughts are a bit more organized before they were before they were when you created a mind map. So now what will happen is when you create a mind map before writing an essay, first of all, you can understand, okay, what all is going inside my mind. Then you can prune. No, okay, I don't want to study any sub favorite subject. I want to study only subjects which are good for jobs. Then you will cross all these trees and focus on this and maybe branch it out. So this is the first level mind map. So always write down everything that is coming in your mind and try to organize it. So if you look at it, even though it is in form of a diagram, but it looks much more organized and it will give you a direction to proceed. Personally, after I had started using this technique, I think two years back, the quality of my writing, I have myself seen from the reviewers and you know all my friends. I personally have seen that there's a structure in the writing and it leads to better reception at the audience and they can better understand. So, and you can also test this. So maybe if you participate in some essay writing competition or something and you write an essay on some topic and you organize it using mind map and then write, you will see a huge difference in the way you are writing. So from the same example, now the student says that uh, he or she has pruned the map, the same map, mind map, to identify the most pertinent aspect for the essay. So this person wants to uh, study the subject based on only for the jobs. And then, then again, uh, so they will write about these particular aspects. So this is how mind map can help you organize your thoughts. So next time when you start writing an essay, uh, read what you have supposed to read, reflect on it, and then do not jump to your laptops to write the article. I would always suggest create a mind map and then start writing. And now I 
I also accept that uh, not everyone would be comfortable with this technique, but this is something you can only identify if you're comfortable or not after using this technique in real life. And please let me know how you found how you found it after using it. So is the concept of mind maps clear now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So hopefully you guys will revisit your negotiation and critical reflection essays and try to see or at least if you can create a mind map for even one of these essays and see the difference it creates it would be really useful for you going forward now so this is basically the distribution of marks in the negotiation essay for the class uh, so most of the students scored between five to seven and uh, very few more than nine so this is basically i just wanted to show you the distribution however when it came to the critical reflection essay this is the distribution of marks so this is not for only ec or cac but the entire class so um, can you see any difference between these two and what does this difference mean and can you show the uh... Previous graph, yes, ma'am. Let me put them side by side for you. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, as I see. Uh, on the pay gap essay, it was uh, on the critical thinking, and uh, so we can say that uh, critical thinking of one person average. There is no average for a critical thinking. Everyone, everyone have a different level of the critical thinking. Whereas on the left graph, we have to just understand the overall uh, what the essay want to pursue, and we have to just write as a summary and understand that what it wants to convey. So it's like a reading and then uh, understanding its thoughts and then put it on on the other hand we have to uh, critically think what it's uh, want the results and uh, what it wants to implement the things in our mind that critical thing so i think this this may be the gap okay thank you vishal anyone want anyone else wants to have a go at it or explain what could be the reason behind this difference in the distribution of marks so one thing was clear that in the second essay you were giving a you were given a material to read okay it was around more than 10 pages long and uh, so everyone was reading the same material and they were, you were supposed to reflect on it and whereas in the first assignment everyone's story was different and they were not reading anything but writing what whatever that was coming in my mind and this is one of the explanations that I'm giving, there could be many other explanations. So what I thought was that um, most of the students may not have thought critically. They may be stating the obvious facts in the second essay, maybe copying from here and there. And that is why uh, I could not see much dis difference in the distribution of the marks. Because most of you were basically saying the same things. But very rare it was found that uh, some students had actually reflected on it. So basically this portion, the still six, these are basically writing uh, the same things. They are just, maybe it, the articles are more about uh, filling, emptying bucket from somewhere and filling it in the other document. So basically not about reflection much. So this is one thing that I found could be reason behind such a difference. Anyway, normally marks distribution is generally a bell curve. So if most of you would have critically thought on the topic, then I, I think the distribution may have been like this. But that is my observation. So one thing that was really different in these two assignments was that you were given something to read in this one and then reflect on it. Whereas in this one, you were supposed to write your own thoughts. Okay. So other thing I want to talk about is using data and figures and images in your essays. So most of you in your market structure, segmentation, competitive analysis, 
have used excellent figures, data, and images. And if you have carefully read the feedback that I have given, uh, you may guess what I'm going to talk about. But uh, talking about this is essential even to a group because so far I have only given such kind of feedback to the individual team members, but I think it is important to discuss it collectively also. So let us see. So suppose you come across this submission, and again I am pointing out I'm just using these for examples. So suppose you come across this kind of submission. So what will you think when you are going through an essay and it has this graphic inside? So what do you think when you look at it? My entire attention will go to the graphics. Okay. Okay, so what is there in the graphics that it is seeking your attention? Uh, well, ma'am, there is some uh, total vaccinations that has been happened till now, and other information that I'm able to see in the image. Other than that, I'm not focusing on any other thing. Okay. So the yeah. thing is, you mentioned you can see total vaccination, and for the other pieces of information, you said other information. Yes. So the thing is that the other information. It has been put there with the intention of sending some message, but, but because it is not really visible to the mm. naked eye, it is creating problem. So the figure is from Ministry of Health website. It's a very strong source. However, there are certain problems with this. And we will discuss them here. The figure is extremely important for the piece that has been written. However, it is not able to achieve what the authors may be desiring to achieve. Why do you think it is happening? Suppose it is not visible. So even if you normally would increase the resolution of the page, even then, because normally a page is like this, and even when you increase the resolution, uh, it still is a challenge to read this extremely important piece of information. So just because it is not visible clearly, these details are not visible. And uh, please don't think it is not visible because of the, in the PPT, even in the doc. And that is why I picked up this example. So it is hardly visible. We don't know what piece of information the group may be trying to convey. And although they have done good amount of research and selected this snap, but uh, the, the desired impact has not been created. Moreover, if this figure had an associated caption to say what they're talking about, then they might have achieved something. But this is just hanging standalone in the document. So that is why an important piece of information has uh, not been able to achieve what it was intended to achieve. So try not to do these kind of things. And I will be discussing how to improve such practices as we go forward. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, please. Ma'am, in this photo, the caption is given that the Ministry of Health website provides very little information about the users. So I guess that is uh, uh, the message uh, the you, uh, people are uh, trying to show that right. very less data is visible on their site. So when you say uh, the Ministry of Web Health website, first of all, I'm not sure it's the Ministry of Health. It's Ministry of Health and Family Welfare website. OK? Okay. That's the first thing, because there is no Ministry of Health in India. It's Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Then <clears throat> if you're talking about your website, then you're saying provides very little information to the user. So normally, uh, I think it's surveys, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so surveys, normally what happens is uh, when you create a document, an index is created even for figures and tables at the beginning of the document. OK? OK. So uh, normally, they are clickable links. So you click on those links, and you go to the respective image or table. Or normally people don't go only by reading the caption. They want to know if the figure is really interesting to them or not. Then they choose to go. 
Now, when you say very little information to the user, you must be more specific. Very little information about what? Okay. okay. What exactly this website is showing? So you could say, this is a snapshot from Ministry of Health and Family website. It shows the total vaccination status of people in India. Apart from that, it also shows the number of and percentage of active discharge and the deaths caused by COVID. So something like that. You have to be more elaborate and more connected to the work that you are doing. Okay, ma'am. So I, I I agree. The caption is there, but it may not be complete at the moment. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And the other reason I said this is not a caption is because caption is always has a prefix of figure, figure number, and then caption comes. If you look at your notebooks also, that is how it goes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So uh, these may small seem small things to you, but uh, they are extremely significant. So don't try to take it personally. I have yes, just used them as an example because okay. I really thought that it should be used. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So uh, similar things uh, I found here that <clears throat> so when. The team is there to explain what is happening. It is easier to receive what the message is. But sometimes, and most of the times, we just upload our documents or send somewhere. People have to interpret on their own. So that is why you know you should write documents and put figures such that it is served as a platter on the plate, so they don't have to you know struggle to understand it and all these things. So next time when you use such things, put a figure put a caption and uh, instead of putting them this align, try to center the figure and refer to the figure. So as I mentioned in the comment, you're saying it links to various news stories as shown in figure. So the figure should always be referenced in the article so that the user knows what you're talking about. So I hope the message is clear now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So now let us look at another uh, example. So if you were to come across this uh, image, how will you interpret it? What What can you see? What is happening here? None of the same study related to um, coronavirus and colleges and some people. It's saying that uh, if we travel, then we'll get infected. So before that, we should get the vaccination and then we will be happy, something like this. Right. So uh, almost right. I think uh, the members will also agree. Nothing. So, Sarvesh, you are saying nothing. Yes, ma'am. There is uh, there is two things that this uh, slide is trying to show. The first one is uh, if you're going out, there are two possibilities. That, uh, there is virus everywhere. So first, you should stop and get vaccinated. That then you don't have to do. Then you can move freely. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you're not vaccinated, you'll uh, you'll get uh, you'll get infected by the virus, and you have to go through all the medications, and then you'll be able to. You can see go out in the world. Okay. Thank you, Sarvesh. Uh, any other? Yeah. Anyone and else? it was wrong. Okay. Anyone else wants to interpret this? Because this is an open question. So again, see, at first look, uh, this uh, flow chart using diagrams or graphics, it is trying to convey something really important. However, uh, because it has not used any texts to facilitate this understanding, it is open to multiple interpretations. As a result of which, when there are multiple interpretations, uh, the message that the authors may be intending to send may get lost. So that is why whenever you are drawing a flowchart or using graphics, uh, please use some texts to assist the understanding for the reviewer or any other person so that they can also grasp what you're trying to share and otherwise again if this is an academic essay or some assignment uh, you will lose marks unnecessarily 
you have already put the information just a bit of more work and then the message will really, really fly what what about this what is happening here so i know understanding these figures without the context will be difficult but even with context uh, sometimes you know it gets very challenging to understand the graphs which which do not have assisted text with them so that is why normally if you know some text here some text here some text here that could explain what is happening then it would really do justice to this image because definitely a lot of hard work has gone into creating this image that we all can know because there is a lot of thinking that the people have put in however since they have done so much of hard work it would also would have been great if some assisted text would have been provided then the understanding and interpretation would have been extremely good so this is something we can learn from this piece now i want you all to look at this diagram and review this so what do you think about this piece of diagram And it seems to be more understanding. We can understand the, uh, what the graph want to say. I can understand by reading the different flows. So you are saying it is more comprehensive? Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And what makes it easier to understand? The written part, the text which is written. Yeah, so there is a balance between the usage of graphics and text and now it is facilitating the understanding of any alien user or alien reader who is coming to this piece for the first time he or she can read this and understand that what is happening and this is quite elegant also it's very simple uh, using very minimal things but very very powerful because it is uh, hitting the nail right at the point Obviously, it may not be perfect, but because of its the way information has been organized and conveyed, it comes across much easier to understand. So always try to aim for simplicity and elegance in diagrams you are making, so that the information can be conveyed uh, with uh, much more convenience to the user end. So let us review this graph in content. What do you think about this one? So if you were to read this piece of uh, information in the document, uh, what would you think? And the lines which have been highlighted and the arrows which have been pointed out in the next slide, are there any suggestions on come out? These are actually the comments. Since I have taken the snapshot of the document, so these are actually the comments that you see, right, in the document. These yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, the, the, ma'am, when you'll be explaining, is there, is there anything going to come at, no, no, at the no. end of the No. So the, hmm. the, this is the way they have presented it. Yeah, yeah. So these red things are my suggestions and comments. So, Essentially, this is the piece that I want you to have a look. Ignore the red things. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. So in this, you can see, as you can see, that the graph is very much visible. Right on your face, you can see. Yes. The data, the number, the colors, everything is quite clear to the reader and just above that the context has been provided so this way what what has happened here is that the graphs is working together with the content of the document and as a result of which they are a team and that is where the message that uh, is coming across is quite robust and solid now con contrast this with the other diagram that we have seen on the you know figures and everything like this one this is also quite important plot 
right but here the x axis the y axis are hardly visible we don't know what is written here we don't even know the legends here so as a result of it because of the visibility issue the message is getting compromised so next time when you add figures tables graphs in your document make sure that they are visible so that they can send the they can create the impact that you want them to create that's the only difference See, visibility makes such a huge difference when it comes to sending the message are you getting my point yes yes ma'am okay next so similarly for this one also it's quite clearly visible and the the authors the point that they are trying to make is uh, further elaborated in their text so when images graphs and figures have to work together with the content of your document you uh, normally what we think is when we put some graphics here and there and <clears throat> our work has become better it has obviously become better because now you have included graphics but the work is not yet complete there is a lot more that needs to be done and that is why this discussion is important because just pasting a figure in the document will not give you what you expect you have to discuss that plot label it properly and then use the findings from that plot to make the point you are trying to make so again from this i wanted to show you that your figure should be clearly visible see these numbers you can see them properly the colors are visible you can see the difference that the plot is trying to show so this is an example of a <coughs> graph that is able to achieve its desired purpose is that clear now yes yes ma'am okay now let us look at this so kindly review this piece of snapshot and what do you what do you see from so far what we have discussed what do you have to say ma'am both the interfaces are clean and tidy okay and uh, but can you see what is written inside of <clears throat> Yes, I'm the only problem that is seeing that we are not able to see the image properly. Yeah. The rest it is good, like the presentation. And... There is another problem. There is a huge gap in between these two screens. Mm -hmm. yes, it's not right. Problem. So uh, that means there might have been some scope for increasing the size, and then because obviously the authors are trying to create some point using these screenshots. and they have very much strategically placed them at the right point however uh caption is not there any explanation of that is missing so that is why they are just again hanging in vacuum uh, not able to leverage the advantage that they were supposed to create here so next time how would you improve this please if you were to improve what would you do differently about it uh, i will mem point out what i want to say with uh, each of them each pictures not uh, uh, means point first what uh, it conveys and for the second picture what it conveys okay and try to <coughs> make it like uh, the uh, in between uh, for the first and second so that it seems that no extra white space is left okay so make sure whenever you add send in screenshots or something i know screenshots uh, are there for a reason but uh, try to see that what is the importance of the text in the screenshot and if that text is important in that screenshot uh, it must be visible the point that you are trying to make should come out very readily in the screenshots that you are sharing otherwise uh, because see you have a story in your head the reviewer does not know your story you are trying to communicate your story to the reviewer or to the audience so that is why you have to literally take it step by step and all these things they might look uh, very unimportant to you at the moment but trust me uh, they can create a huge difference going forward 
Excuse me, can we get back to the last slide, please? So here we were just comparing the screenshot that we have took, not the okay. interface. OK. So again, uh, oh, so I, I think, who is this? Rishikesh? Um, uh, Ron Khavle. OK. So uh, friend, uh, when you said, and thank you for explaining that, because now we are not operating in a hypothetical universe. But again, <clears throat> you could have added a figure and caption to say exactly what you're what you're trying to achieve through this snapshot. Because so, as I, um, I know you no, have the text. No, ma'am. Actually, I'm asking is uh, here in this topic, were we comparing the screenshots or the interface? I don't know. It depends on what the team was trying to convey. Because there is no caption, so we don't know what exactly is happening here. OK, ma'am. Because the idea which popped up in my mind that when I first saw these two images was, ma'am, what happened in China, uh, like the case study that I came across personally, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Google tried, uh, when we see our Google search engine front page, we see a very clean interface. Right. And they and they tried the same interface in China, but mm -hmm. whereas in China, China, Chinese people doesn't like that. They like uh, ads popping up. Okay. Th that that appeals to that crowd. Okay. So over that, Google faced a lot of issue, and Google lost the bat battle with Baidu, and the default search engine over there is Baidu mm. over Google. Right. Right. So I thought uh, we were comparing the interfaces. So. It also applies that on in which region we are working. Okay. So because uh, I honestly at first look I struggled to understand this. Look at first look from this, and if you could have put the explanation, as assisted explanation for this, or maybe a caption as to what the purpose this is serving, what purpose this is serving, and what is the purpose they together are serving. Then uh, the information or the message that uh, the team was trying to send would have been received much more clearly. Yes, ma'am. And after writing that information, that the blank space present between them can also be occupied. So uh, you see, uh, there is, as we can also all, all of us see that uh, there is a clear story in the head of the proposers and the audience to be able to receive it properly the bridge has to be you know properly built so that the information can travel seamlessly from the creator to the receiver so i hope you are able to understand the points that i am making but thank you for raising that point dear these such kind of discussions are extremely useful in opening up our minds now uh, let us focus at this table i mean i know it's not drastically something incorrect with this, but still there is a lot of scope for improvement in this one. So the, the message here is that sometimes we look at stats and tables from other sources, and although we get the information, but it may not be that presentable. So rather than directly you know, taking the image from there, sometimes what you can do is you can create your own table and put the information exactly as that and mentioning the source. That way it makes it much more elegant to and presentable in the document. So next time when you see some sources where information is good, and mostly I'm talking about the tables because figures you don't have this option. So tables, when they do not look so much presentable to you, try to create your own table. So in this case, you would create three columns and six rows and then populate the table and then mention the source. Again, here also uh, a similar issue is that uh, the images are standalone. So the core issue I hope you are understanding is that figures without explanation are standalone and fail to create the desires and the desired and intended impact on the audience. So imagine if this would have had a caption explaining what is really happening and what is the objective of this figure, what is the objective of this figure. Then it would have been way easier to. Uh, Ma'am, 
the I have a question that maybe the text written before that picture or just below that picture as uh, like the other text so it may ex uh, explaining that picture also yes you're right but even in those explanations we shall we need to refer to the figure number and if there are multiple figures in the figure so for example if this was figure one then it has two parts figure one a and figure one b so referring the figures in your explanations and discussions is also very important academic practice so sometimes uh, you would have also seen authors saying as ex this can be seen from the figure as shown below or as shown above if such figures are in the immediate vicinity of the text then it's fine otherwise you know there has to be a link between the figures and the text and the reviewer should not be searching for that link that link should be explicitly clear to the person because of the way a piece has been written so does that convince you okay yes okay thank you for asking the raising the question so similarly uh, i have expanded this the snapshot but uh, the issue here was that the numbers were not much visible uh, as you can see from the size of this document font size i had to expand it to see it so see uh, normally when you will be tomorrow writing reviews or research papers uh, it goes to review for people who are very busy and already reviewing multiple submissions so normally uh, they are looking for something which is easier to read and in which they don't have to put much efforts in the basic things. So you need to make things easier for your reviewers. Again, putting information in a systematic structured manner so that uh, they don't have to uh, go through pains for the basic things. And mostly they are not sitting with, with, a, with a magnifying glass at their end to be able to understand what is really embedded in the piece of the documents. So these seem like very trivial things, but uh, I can assure you that when you are using graphics and figures, they assume uh, considerable importance. So now I want you to, I request you to look at this flow chart and what do you think about this one? It seems to be a good flow chart along with some fonts and background colors and some designs also. And when they are also covering almost the most of the agents, like most of the customers, their app or something they would be using, like for in that traveler registered on the app, yes and no. There might be only two options. So if they are registered, they have a different path, and if they have not, then they have to. Okay. So do you think that this flowchart is able to convey what it was desired to convey or destined to convey? Yes, my means I do not know about what the project was, but like according to my knowledge, which I seeing after seeing this, like uh, for example, a traveler is using an application. If you have he has registered for in that application he would get points and discounts coupon so it can he can he or she can use for later okay. and he would he or she would get suggestions according to the travel history and reviews okay right so if there are multiple viewers of this diagram they would all take back the same information from this diagram or flowchart now contrast it with the other flowcharts that we might have seen so this is here the information relatively seems uh, flowing in a particular manner which is supporting its reception and comprehension at the user end and also it looks quite simple and elegant and so this is something that uh, is uh, able to achieve its desired purpose so this is a good good flow chart so there are certain points you must consider 
uh, please do not put graphics and tables mindlessly so definitely when you're thinking to put some image some table in your submissions you should do entire justice to them not just paste it there without taking care of how to interpret it whether it has been labeled whether it has been properly referred to in the text otherwise the impact that you want it to create may not be created just putting or sticking images is not enough you have to read them interpret them and discuss them in your write-up to make the point so do not assume that all the figures and tables are self-explanatory most of the times they are not they need the assisted text to be able to be taken properly at the receiving end and as authors you have to take care of all this it's a good writing practice i have already mentioned just placing them is not sufficient yes one of the most important ways to improve your submission is to get them reviewed before submission because when you get the work reviewed you get some comments from the point of view of someone who is reading your article for the first time and normally that will help you to work and go back on your submission and work on it again and improve it another way to practice is to practice writing as much as can and reviewing others work reviewing others work also helps us to learn a lot about all these kind of things like academic writing graphs tables and everything so make a habit of writing if you really want to improve your academic writing and also share each other's writing so that you can review and learn together so this was some some of the take backs from the lecture and i hope from the examples i was able to show you some of the things that you may not do in the future and you know lose out on your clients stakeholders or as students in your case marks so some of the reading sources i have put in you could use them during your summer vacations uh, this is a course era course on academic writing this is another course by tufts university and these are some of my lecture notes on academic writing at the end of these notes i think there is a book that i have also shared so you might like to go through that book also it's a 100 page book by oxford publication so if any one of you is interested to read that in your summer vacations uh, you could go through that book so this is a really good book this is hyperlink so you could actually download and see so these are some of the lectures things you could use in your summer vacation to improve upon your writing that is all i wanted to discuss today i hope the discussion was useful and that will limit you from creating mistakes as much as important it is to learn from things we do right i think we learn a lot more from things we didn't do right i mean at least it's my personal experience that uh, when things go wrong we learn much faster than when they go right so hopefully uh, you will try to incorporate the lessons we discussed today and uh, next time when you're creating some submission you will be mindful of all these things so i thought that as last lecture it is important to talk about because uh, i had uh, i really enjoyed assessing your submissions and giving feedback and uh, i'm very happy to know that most of you are free thinkers and uh, i've really put in a lot of efforts in that so i i personally enjoyed uh, this journey with you so thank you so much so thank, thank you thank you, you. I'll upload the article.